Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Mr. Wonka7, back again with another vlog-style rant. I'm going to talk about WrestleMania 31, because I'm not going to be watching it, but... On hindsight, the card is looking better than I thought it would. I'm only going to talk about four of the matches. I'm going to list them in the order of what time I would like chronologically book them. First is the match of the 80s, which is Cena versus Rusev, Rocky Balboa versus Ivan Drago. I never watched Rocky movies. What the fuck am I talking about? But. That I'm actually that on paper actually sounds pretty good. I still wouldn't watch it though, but if you think about it, that sounds pretty good because Rusev was the only Gucci guy to debut in 2014 on Raw. Like Bo debuted properly in 2014, and then you had. Adam Rose, but both of them are trash. Really, Rusev has been the only one who's like Gucci. He's done a really good job. I mean, everyone thought he was going to lose his undefeated streak to Jack Swagger in SummerSlam, but nope. He's been holding on. He's been holding on to cooler guys, to better dudes. I'm thinking, damn. And. Cena really needs to go out there and prove that he can beat a monster style heel. Because he wasn't able to beat the beast that is Brock Lesnar. Uh, he has to go after a lesser beast, I guess, which is Rusev. Now, a lot of people aren't looking forward to this match because Cena doesn't really do a good job of putting over newer guys, which. That is true, but you know what? Yeah, this match is probably gonna be doo doo too, cause it's just gonna be Cena powering out of Rusev's abuse for a while, or it could be something completely different, but in the same cliche. I don't like when. Motherfuckers predict cards and they act like they can predict the future. They act like the WWE is more predictable than it actually is. But you know what? The match might be doo doo. The match might be good. It might be somewhere in between. But on paper, this sounds like a good idea. In practice, we know how things can get. Next is the match in the 90s, which is. Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker. I wasn't really looking forward to this at first because I don't really like Bray Wyatt. Now, he, Bray Wyatt's been the hottest guy to debut in 2013. This is that bad match that seems like it's booked in the 90s. But, to be honest, his storylines make no fucking sense. His promos... He's trying to make mountains out of molos. I don't understand what he's saying half the time. It's not that I have poor listening comprehension. It's that his stuff isn't consistent. It makes no sense. There's too many plot holes. Are his like promos interpretive or something of that nature? I don't get it. I don't get the story of Bray Wyatt, his backstory, who this character is. He just seems like a chubby, bearded, long-haired, stringy-haired Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, if you control for all those features, he does kind of look like Leonardo DiCaprio. And he's going up against the Undertaker, saying that the Undertaker ain't shit now. He's a normal person, and you face a fear. You... Prove that you weren't shit, that you never wore shit when you lost to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 30 and your streak was gone. And I'm going to beat you ag again and I'll really expose you and I'll prove myself to be the new face of fear. 
that's kind of what he says right now. If you think about it, ever since Bray Wyatt came back in Hell in a Cell, he's been on a roll. He's been, like, smashing through Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler. And all these guys trying to compensate for Cena destroying him twice. And... In fact, Cena destroyed the whole Wyatt family for good. If you think about it, they never came back. They all went separate ways after individually coming back. But, yeah, Cena annihilated all of them. Wyatt eventually came back, and he's been on this roll just so that he can look good for this Mania match. We have yet to see The Undertaker. We know he pretty much gave the confirmation that he's going to be in Mania, he's going to fight Bray Wyatt, but I don't know if he's going to be coming into the ring in a wheelchair, like Stephen Hawking style. I don't know what I'm looking at for the future. I am totally confused. Next, uh, let me... Let me backtrack a little. The reason I'm not looking forward to Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker, the reason I wasn't looking forward to that shit is because his storylines don't make sense. And because I don't really see Bray Wyatt as that new face of fear. He doesn't really scare me. He just kind of seems... Bizarre. Anyway, I backtracked when I didn't need to. I actually got the point across the first time. Match of 2001, the match that should have been in the invasion angle, which is Sting versus Triple H. Now, the whole idea behind the storyline, someone who has like is underrated when it comes to bad stories is Triple H. Like, ever since he became semi-retired, his storyline stopped making sense. So you mean to tell me that Sting waited all these years, 15 years, to get his hands on Triple H? That makes no sense. Like, what kind of strategic planning is that? He was going to wait till Triple H was a semi-retired authority executive dude makes no sense and you could have easily set this up so that it would make sense just say oh well I did all that stuff to get in your case so that you can come at me as the game and not as the CEO and I want to have this classic match with you and things like that you don't have to pretend that this dude was in a coma between WCW and now. He's been doing other stuff. You don't have to say explicitly that. You don't have to explicate that he's been in TNA, but don't act like the guy's been a freaking fedora neckbeard basement dweller for a decade and a half. Like, these Triple H shits be making no type of sense. The worst offender was the Brock Lesnar feud. I didn't get that at all. I don't even know if he legitimately was going to retire and he kind of pussyfooted. Then he, like, unbit the bullet. But, <laughs> again. Funny thing about that. Sting's last performance in TNA. That first aired the night before my great grandmother died. So that's some like emotional ass shit that I have to hold in. But it's a fact. So yeah, it pretty much takes me back. And I kind of thought they were going to go for something a little better when Sting actually debuted. But no, they went with this kind of angle. You can't just have dream matches for the fuck of it. About, let's have some simplicity so that 
we can avoid the unnecessary plot holes. But anyway, this match will probably be okay as well. Triple H matches nowadays, I don't really like them. I don't really like his in-ring style. When he's nasty, he's good. But when he's fighting someone who's crippled, not so good. So let's see how good Sting is. That's going to be the main variable. And lastly, we got... Or second to last, we have the match of 2005. Which will be... Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. Now, Roman Reigns, a lot of people are saying that he's really green right now. But... He's not really ready to face Brock Lesnar. That he's going to end up as the next John Cena. And... I can buy into that, but... Now that John Cena is downgraded as a mid-carder, I don't really hate on Cena too much. I used to hate on him ODs. The reason I say this is the match of 2005 is because... This will be the crowning of the new guy that's going to be the safety when it comes to booking. Roman Reigns is going to be the safe guy. Now, the only world champions he's defeated are CM Punk, I'm talking about singles competition, Kane, Big Show, and Daniel Bryan. So, he is a little green since Daniel Bryan was kind of like this last minute thing they threw in because they needed something after Reigns won the Rumble. To kind of give Reigns a little bit more, just a little bit more legitimacy. So they put his number one contendership on the line. His main event ticket straight to World Title Match of Mania on the line. Now, his style is really limited right now and his theme is the same as the shield. His outfit is the same as... When he was in the shield, his character really didn't develop. And I've seen and heard the things that he's... I've heard the things and read the things he said on the internet about his fan reaction. And I'm thinking, you could go about this a little bit better. Motherfuckers don't like you because you're too green? I know you want to say fuck the criticism and fuck the haters right now, but you could go about it in a way that's a little bit more genuine and a little bit more alpha, even though I don't like, for lack of a better term. Because right now, going up against Brock Lesnar, the guy that ended his streak and the guy that pretty much cemented John Cena as a mid-carder. Even more so than that knee from Brian Danielson. Daniel Bryan. Yep. If you had this where it was Daniel Bryan instead of Roman Reigns, it wouldn't have worked either, but... This match was going to happen. It was it was hinted at since at least 2013, 2014. Early on, too. So, this was pretty much planned in the work that's been brewing for a while and you know what, like in terms of a main event, I really don't know what I'm going to be looking at. Am I going to be looking at Brock Lesnar suplexing Roman Reigns all over the arena until Roman Reigns gets a lucky like Superman punch in, 
like it manages to connect after a while and then a couple of spears every now and then I don't know I mean I can imagine the spot where to do a spear into the barricade or some shit like that but they haven't touched yet they haven't done that much yet so this shit doesn't seem tense now. There isn't that intensity where I'm imagining Roman Reigns and Lesnar and this concrete thing. No, right now, I, I see the names, I see the verses in between, but there isn't that connect yet. I know what they're trying to do with the fact that Roman Reigns is from that Samoan family that shares ties with The Rock, with Samoa Joe, with, what's his face? I don't know if it's a fire, Afwa, I keep forgetting. Anyway, um, I'm talking about the family that is. Who's, who's that one that, Yokozuna. Yoko fucking Zuna, the Usos, Rikishi. Because you see, Brock Lesnar defeated Roman Reigns' cousin, Dwayne Johnson, and sent his ass to Hollywood. And there was never a rematch. So that's pretty much a dead giveaway that Hey, your family's badass, and you're a badass amongst your family's ranks. But your biggest baddie, La Rock, couldn't. He couldn't do me in. He lost, and he was humiliated. He never recovered from that. He was never the same in terms of his wrestling career. So that was that was one thing they could have done. That's the one thing that they were trying to do, but. Like, what does this say about Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar? Because right now it seems more like Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman right now. The manager is getting more shots in at the family and at Roman Reigns. They've been talking amongst each other more. And it seems more like this is about Roman getting his hands on Heyman eventually. These guys need to touch the Raw before Mania. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar need to touch, and I need to be able to imagine, I need to be able to believe that Romans could do some damage to Lesnar, that he can hold his own at least. That he can hold his own is badass enough. And... Really, I don't know how they could have prepared Roman Reigns for this stuff. It would have been nice if they had him feud with someone else aside from... Oh, I forgot. He also defeated Randy Orton. That was a world champion, too. It would have been nicer if they had him feud with people besides the Stooges and things of that nature. Like, Although I can't say that the way they booked him in terms of matches he was in pay-per-views was too bad. It wasn't as good as Seth Rollins, and no matter who wins this match at Mania, Seth Rollins is probably going to cash in after he's done with his match against Orton, which I'm not going to be talking about for this video. The last thing I'm going to be talking about is the fact that there's that ladder match which has all these badass workers and it has from Bad News Barrett it has Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose, Cody Rhodes and I think Art Truth too. It has all these badasses and my pick is Dean Ambrose, if this was 2013 and back, it would have probably been Cody Rhodes. 
because those are my favorite workers. If anything would get me to actually watch the pay-per-view, it's that match, but alas, all four matches I've mentioned right now, the match of the 80s, 90s, 2001, 2005, all of these should be things that have me glued on my seat for the pay-per-view, but I'm not going to watch that special event. It's not in my best interest, I think. There are better things I can do with my time, like watching Let's Play videos, or, um, self-reflecting. Well, going into, like, a mental monologue and contemplating shit. That's, like, time better spent, because, I don't know about you, but... Now that I'm not daydreaming in front of a classroom, I could set some time aside to just think to myself instead of reading shit on the internet or doing any of my side shit. Anyway, this video went on way too fucking long. It's your boy Mr. Wonka7 back again with another vlog classic. I'm not feeling too bad about this one. This was only my second take. You know what I mean? With my fifth and seventh take, a video that would be three minutes becomes a 20 minute video. So, I'm not too pissed about this one. Anyway, peace. Been your boy, Mr. Marcus7, and suck my dick.